Hi. Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to Palm Praise 2. And I certainly hope that peace and blessings have been upon you this day. Now, I know it's a little late in the evening, but uh, we're still going to get a take in the Black Woman's Guide to Understanding the Black man. And strength be upon all at the sound of my voice to endure your workload, whether it be mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, for self. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the book. We're on take four, not just four, but 34 in chapter seven. And it goes like this. <clears throat> Answer. The black man is disrelated, unassociated, and detached from any semblance of nationality or brotherhood with his own kind. And he is afraid that his white supporters will define any move he makes to support his own people as a sign of racism or support of black segregation. Many of them boast to the media that they do not consider themselves black or white. They are just ball players. They are the most non-political bunch of black men in America. They think that they are protecting themselves from criticism or unsupportmanship like reputations. No, they do not owe other black men anything. Theoretically, they don't. But they owe it to themselves and their four parents who suffered untold punishment to make sure future generations of black men survived. He owes it to his children to maintain visible institutions of the black man's ability and talent to be self-sufficient and self-governing over his own destiny. And he owes it to himself, to acknowledge his own culture, heritage, and traditions because a man who denies his past afflictions and rejects contact with his own kind for the purpose of social approval and financial gain is soon erased from the memory of everyone he associates with. Just how many future generations a black man will have to look at 5,000-year-old pyramids and King Tut as the only proof of black men in history who produce great things independent of other nationalities. Every other nationality residing in America builds monument institutions or maintain annual traditions that continually link them to their proud past. This is not considered racist, nor is it considered unnecessary because of integration. They are maintained for their children's benefit and to provide them with a personal foundation of ideals from which they can continue to grow and progress with the rest of the world. The black man is the only man who has decided that it is not necessary to stay in contact with his roots based on his presumption that men in other nationalities will frown on his efforts. This doesn't make any sense for survival. Professional sport players are only another kind of an entertainer who perform for the amusement of paying customers in an area. 
when participating in recreational activities of the sports scene, the black man may frequent dinner spots, take a trip using an airplane, stay a few days in a hotel or park his car in a private lot. When he uses any of these public facilities, he is known to over tip. Most of them are not aware of the scale or the amount to be tipped. And due to them identifying emotionally with the maid, the bellman, the bellhop, or the waiter, they will tip excessively. They also do this to impress the hired help that they are big time spenders who can afford to pass out huge tips. Other black men do not tip at all and take the attitude that they are doing enough by paying for the meal, hotel room, or other basic service. Nevertheless, he devotes a lot of energy in discovering new ways to expend his leisure time. If his work is repetitive and boring, requiring no real thought or concentration, his leisure time swells into importance. He tries to make up for his dull job by seeking exciting recreation. Television opened up a new field of entertainment for the black man, and he watched the Nat King Cole show in 1956. I Spy with Bill Cosby in 1956, and Julia starring Deenan or Dehan Carroll in 1968. Julia was a nurse, a divorced single parent with one son. She worked for a white physician and nearly all of her son's life centered around her doctor employer. While this show was considered a massive social advancement by featuring a competent, attractive, intelligent black female, Julia sent out the wrong message about black men. Her situation subliminally implied that black men messed up some kind of way and lost their woman, who were left behind to care for their children and that the black father rarely, if ever, shows up to see his son. Entire segments were devoted to Julia, trying to explain to Corey why he didn't have a father, or she was trying to fill the gap by seeking advice or aid from her doctor boss. This show set a theme by demonstrating the accomplishments of a single black woman who had her own apartment and job who was raising her son comfortably and maintaining a fulfilled life without a black man in her home. Hmm. The country was not ready to show scenes of the daily life of a regular black family, so this entity was treated as if it was non-existent. Hmm. Bill Cosby on I Spy was a sort of detective flick which requires no comment. One has to be seen it to believe it. Nat Cole was the first black man to host a TV variety show and he handled it with grace and dignity. And he was always dressed sharp. These days, black men, black man is seen on multiple TV shows in all kinds of roles. This too is considered advancement and inclusion in the showbiz industry. Black men used to complain that they should be included in commercials about deodorant, mouthwash, toothpaste, soap, cosmetic, and other household products or machinery. However, the main commercials where black men are found are beer with high alcohol content, liquor sales, soft drinks, 
Snickers, telephones, or cereal. Cable viewing is almost a norm in black homes, as a as is VCR usage. Other TV shows such as The Cosby Show, filled with delightful characters, portrays a nicely operating African family, including grandparents. It's a good comedy, but there is never any doubt that it is the black wife who runs the house and has the final say about what goes on. Care is taken to make sure the Claire periodically gets Cliff told. This is always turned into a joke of some sort. The black father on the old Good Times series, John Amos, was a stronger male figure in the home, and it was clearly understood that James, and not Florida, was in charge of the family and the home. He was the final authority. Then today comes True Colors, a sitcom with a black man, husband, father, and a white wife and stepmother, including a white mother-in-law. This is a soft attempt to introduce interracial marriage by showing it was fun. Other black men are seen in crucial or supporting roles and they are glad to be working. A few black men are seen in soap operas wooing white women or pretending to be white. And there's even a black woman actress who appears routinely lying in bed with a white male co-actor. Theater movies show black men and white women interestingly drawn together or vice versa. Whites have appeared on television in all kinds of romantic relationships and never saw a need to present themselves as falling in love with a black person. Yet, as soon as blacks infiltrate this medium, practically every other role has them romantically inclined with Caucasians instead of other black people. This is wrong. There is one major black operated national television station called BET out of Washington, D.C. and West Coast. BET has several shows intellectually appearing, appealing excuse me, to African Americans. And they have other shows which have no redeeming social value for blacks and are a waste of valuable airtime. BET does not have a lot of leeway on programming because they cost almost entirely, they count, excuse me, almost entirely on white advertisers to buy commercial space to offer their product to a select audience. Hmm. A reliable, apparently conceivable looking role for black men actors is as a judge in a courtroom metering out justice. One of the most ridiculous parts is when black men are portrayed as police chiefs. This is a role where they loudly curse out and lambast other officers, always white males. They call them on the carpet and say all kinds of insulting things to them, and the white officers just take it and say, yes, sir. The inferior-looking white subordinates cower down, take their punishment, and leave with their tails tucked neatly between their legs. Not likely. Purportedly, this is supposed to demonstrate a black man in a supervisory position, making big decisions and talking really bad to white men. It is, it is contrived, contrived, and weak. But there are all sorts of sports and law enforcement departments that let other black men get off vivaciously by letting off a little steam and seeing a black man talk to a white man the way they themselves has always wanted to do. That completes that take.
Peace be upon you. Be blessed. Thank you.